Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here getting into After Effects today to create some never-ending particle loops. It's a pretty simple setup in After Effects. One effect to generate particles, one effect to loop them. Meaning this is gonna be very easy to adjust and create all kinds of different results. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on building this paint splatters loop, but I'll do a very quick run through on how each of these variations was made just by using different kinds of particles. Let's get into After Effects and get started. So here in After Effects, I'm gonna create a new comp, 1920 by 1080 pixels, but I'm gonna work at 12 frames a second, just because I like that staccato look of a lower frame rate. But I do mention the frame rate because I'm gonna reference the frame rate in a little bit as I get going on this project. Now, what I'm gonna aim for here is a three second looping graphic, and the loop can be any length, but whatever length I want the loop to be, I need the composition to be twice that length. So I need six seconds of timeline. And then let's put a new solid in here. This blue solid will be the background and another solid. This is gonna be our particle world solid. And I'll just make this one a white solid. So let's get a particle world effect on here. And I'm just gonna tweak the settings a little bit to get started. Let's make these particles live a little bit longer. Now for a three second loop, the maximum I can make the longevity or the lifespan of the particles is gonna be three seconds. So let's make these live for three seconds. And then in the producer settings, I'm gonna make the producer a little bit wider. I'll bring the radius X up to 0.2 and we'll give it just a little bit of depth, bringing the radius Z up to 0.5, but move the producer back a little bit, taking the position Z to 0.5 and we'll raise it up a little bit, bringing the position Y to just negative 0.1. Then in the physics section, let's make the explosive physics even a little more explosive. I'm gonna take the velocity from one up to three, and I think if we bring the gravity down, if we cut that in half to 0.25, that's gonna make the scale of everything feel a little bit larger. And I also like using some of this resistance setting. Let's take that all the way up to five. And that means these particles can have this really high velocity when they shoot out and then they get slowed down like there's some wind resistance or something against them. Okay, rather than these little yellow dots or lines or whatever we have here, in the particle section, let's use a different kind of particle type. And I think one of the coolest things you can do with Particle World is to use your own particles. And that's gonna be any of these particle types that say textured. And for a nice basic textured particle, I kind of like this setting called textured disk. It might seem like textured square is the most obvious choice, but textured disk allows you to rotate the particles, which is a nice feature. But obviously we're not seeing any particles yet because the way these textured particles work is that they reference another layer to use as the particles. So we need to create another layer and I'll show you what is, I think it's a little bit of a cheat, but I think it's kind of a fun way to quickly generate all kinds of different particles. What you can do is go to your favorite free fonts website and find a dingbats or an ornaments font, basically an entire set of little illustrated or graphic elements. So I've downloaded this font called Splatter and what I'll do is create a new text layer and just type in, let's say the letter A, we get the first splatter character, and then I'm gonna go into the text options and animate the character offset. And what I'll do here is create a very simple expression. So I'm gonna option or alt click on the little stopwatch and type time times whatever my frame rate is. So time times 12, and then just click anywhere outside of there. So what that'll do is offset the character by one each frame. So we get this nice sequence through the entire alphabet with a different character on each frame. And to keep all the letters centered, I'm gonna make sure the paragraph alignment is set to centered, and then in the animator that the character alignment here is set to adjust kerning. So now we have almost like an image sequence that just cycles through all these characters. Again, I'm gonna be using this layer as a disc shaped particle, which will give us a circle shaped sample of this layer. However, that circle can fit into the shape of your composition. So in this case, a textured disc is gonna give us a sample in this area. All right, then what I'll do is go ahead and turn this layer's visibility off. Let's rename this and call it source shapes. And then in the particle world effect, texture layer dropdown, I'll point this to the source shapes layer. And it looks like that's working, but it's giving us some really tiny shapes. Let's bring the birth and death size both to two. All right, so that's sort of what we want. But what we're seeing right now is that each of these particles is playing back the current time of the source shapes layer. If I turn this layer on, you can see the particles are just matching it on every frame. But what we could do is change the texture time over to birth. And this way, whenever each particle is born, it's just gonna be assigned whatever shape the source layer happens to be at that moment in time, and then it will just keep that shape. Meaning on each frame, we get different types of particles being born. All right, maybe we'll take the birth size up to five, so they're kind of large at the beginning and then get smaller as they go. 
And then we can get into the color and opacity down here. If I drop down this opacity map setting, what this means is that over the lifespan of each particle, they're gonna fade in and then fade out. Sometimes that works pretty well. In this case, I think we can just skip that altogether and draw a line right over the top. I think it's okay if these particles kind of pop into existence instead of fading in and out. Now let's do something a little more interesting with the color. I'm gonna switch the color map over to custom color. And my plan here is just to go absolutely haywire with the color and create some really dramatic changes in color over the lifespan of these particles. So from yellow to white to red to blue back to white. And my thinking here is that if the particles keep changing colors, it'll never really give your eyeballs time to focus on and follow one specific particle. And I think that'll help hide the fact that each of them is really just a static shape. All right, then to get even a little bit more color variation in here, I'm gonna turn this volume shading setting all the way up to 100. I think this is gonna to attempt to shade all the particles like there's a light source, but in this case, I just like that it adds some lighter and darker values in here. Okay, here's what we've got so far. Particles being born, starting at frame zero and kind of shooting outward. A representation of these particles on the timeline would look something like this. Particles being born, they each live for three seconds and then fade out. Now, if we want a three second loop, we can see that obviously the in point here does not match the out point at all. Even if I were to move the playback area over here to where we already have particles moving along, this is not gonna create a seamless loop either, but we can actually turn this into a seamless loop pretty easily. Now, I do want my playback area to be the first three seconds of the timeline. And first of all, what I wanna do is create a keyframe at the very beginning of the timeline on the birth rate. So we're gonna start with a birth rate of two, and I'm also gonna right click and make this a hold keyframe. Then for a three second loop, I'm gonna go right to the three second mark and set another keyframe with a value of zero. So with the hold keyframe, we get particles, particles, particles. They each take three seconds to live their brief lives. And then the emitter shuts off here. But since the particles have a three second lifespan, they still trail off for three seconds after we turn off the emitter. And all we need to do to make this a loop is to make a copy of this section and move it over here. And we could do that using just one effect, the echo effect. By default, that just makes a single echo, which is good. All we need to do is set the echo time to be the exact time of our loop, three seconds. Seems like that would be negative three, but the way they did this effect, positive three creates like a backward echo. Anyways, what that did was take this animation over here and echo it back to the beginning. So we do see these particles fading out as the new ones fade in. By default, the echo effect itself is set to add mode, but here we want the echo to sit on top of everything. So I'm gonna change this echo operator to composite in back. Also kind of strange reverse logic here. This actually means it will composite the original in back and put the echo on top. Anyways, we end up with this nice seamless crossover that actually happens right at the beginning of the timeline. So a three second loop, although you'll notice that frame zero and the frame at three seconds are the exact same frame, which is good, but it also means we need the playback to end one frame before that three second mark. So we don't get the same frame playing twice. Because the timeline starts counting at frame zero, this is actually exactly three seconds. All right, let's put an adjustment layer on top and just power through a few effects to give this thing a little bit of character. So first of all, to create just a little bit more chaos where some of these shapes still look a little bit static, I'm gonna put a turbulent displace effect on here. I'm gonna take the amount down to 25 and the size down to just 10, but bring the complexity up a little bit to five so we get some nice detailed turbulence. And I also want this turbulence to change on every frame. So down in the evolution options, I'm gonna take the random seed and option click on it to create an expression and just say time times 100. That means this random seed is gonna change 100 times per second, more than enough for our 12 frames per second composition. Next, we'll give the image a little bit of stretched out lens distortion with the optics compensation effect. I'm gonna take the field of view to about 60, and I'm also gonna reverse the lens distortion because I wanna add distortion, not compensate for it. And then we'll give the whole thing some grainy noise with a noise effect set to about eight, and then a Gaussian blur to kind of massage that noise into the image. I'll set it to three. And finally, an unsharp mask effect to sharpen things back up. This is kind of my go-to combination, these three effects. Add some noise, blur it together with the image a little bit, and then kind of shrink wrap it back together with unsharp mask. 
Okay, so that's the loop and that's the setup. And all the graphics that I showed at the beginning of this video are really the exact same thing with a few variations. So let's take a quick look at a few variations and there might be some interesting ideas for different approaches. So this Tiki Heads graphic, very, very similar approach. I've got these Tiki Heads, which same as the paint splatters are just using a font that cycles through all of the letters or the shapes. And then those are gonna be our particles. But the particle emitter here is much less chaotic and uses an emitter with this direction axis setting instead of explosive. And it creates particles that just drift toward us, which is done by using a direction axis emitter, then in the direction axis settings using an axis X set to one with zero gravity and zero resistance. This graphic also has a second particle world system to create the lightning bolts, which are not a font. They're just a single little shape layer with a simple lightning bolt animation. And here the texture time is set to from start, meaning each particle will play through the entire lightning bolt animation. A Little bit of glow on top and that's it. All right, this graphic uses three different instances of particle world, but all very simple. This one is also a font with these astrology symbols. This one is just using a star shape layer as the particle, but the shape layer changes colors so that we get some different colored stars depending on when they're born. And this particle world is not even a texture layer, it's just the little shaded sphere setting. I think it's actually the turbulent displace effect on top of everything in this animation that kind of helps glue it together and give everything a little bit of a hand-drawn look. Finally, this animation is also just using a single instance of Particle World, and it's also just using a font for the particles. It's a font that has a bunch of little building images, and I just made the particle emitter pretty much a straight line that emits the particles straight toward us. They go from white to black over their lifespan, and then I just put in a gradient to kind of sneak in and fill in the negative space on the ground. Added some gradients and colors and things on top, which I think helps hide the fact that it's just a font flying toward us. If you want to check out any of these projects or you want to use them as projections in your DJ set, you're more than welcome to. I'll post this project file up and you guys can download it. I'll also link to the fonts I used in this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and maybe it gave you some ideas for things to experiment with in After Effects. More on the way from the Texture Labs channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.